Hello viewers, welcome back to the course of Natural Language Processing. In the last lecture session, we learned bag of word, engram, TF-IDF representation of the text. In this lecture, we will learn another important and most powerful vectorization mechanism called word embedding. Let's start our discussion with an example scenario. You have two sentences in front of you. Apple is good for health and apple is good place to work. As a human being in these two sentences, we know very well about that apple is the word here itself is representing the fruit and here in this sentence it is a company. For a human being it is very easy to capture that, the context of the word in which it has been used. But for a machine, it is very difficult to recognize in which context this word has been used. So the challenge with NLP is capturing the context in which a particular word is used. We will see with another example. Imagine we are building NLP model for cricket game. For this game, your task is recognizing the entities in the given sentence. In this sentence, in 2011, Dhoni got Team India a World Cup victory. Your task is recognizing the entities. That is, Dhoni is a player. India is the name of the team playing. And World Cup is the name of the tournament. Similarly, in the second sentence, Ashes is the tournament. Cummins is the player. And Australia is the T. This is called Entity Recognition Application of NLP. So while building the model for performing this task, given a text, Dhoni got Team India World Cup victory, you must create a model that can recognize the Dhoni as a player and India is a team playing the match and World Cup is the tournament. Now, the task is processing this text, that is, converting it into vector. So, we already discussed different vectorization techniques in the last session itself. Let's have a brief on that, how it will be applicable to these things. First, see the concept of assigning the unique number to all the words in the vocabulary of the given sentences. Let's see how distinct numbers are allocated. To all, the, to all these words in an alphabetical order. Looking at this, Aksar and Dhoni, these two are the players, both are players. Maybe these numbers should be similar. But here in this case, these two are far apart. Aksar is having the unique number 2 and Dhoni is the 7. Actually, these two are the players, might have the similar numbers, but these are far apart. And similarly, whereas we can see that, this Ashish, Ashish is the tournament which is having the value 1, unique 1, which is very closer to a player Aksar. It should be very far, far away, but it is very closer to the player Aksar. So, this kind of random numbering cannot capture the similarities between the words like Aksar and Dhoni, Ashish and Aksar. That is the drawback of this unique numbering representation of this vocabulary of the words it cannot capture the similarity between the words and let's have let's see the 100 encoded representation also and this 100 encoded representation this is 100 encoded vector of length of vocabulary in this for the word in this vector which presents has the value 1 and then the rest of all the elements will have the value 0 we already had a discussion about what are the drawbacks of this one hat encoded representation. One is it cannot capture the relationships between the words. You can see that. Aksar and Dhoni. Aksar is the record which we are having. One hat encoded vector with the second element position is 1. Similarly, at somewhere in the row, you can find out the vector for the Dhoni as well. For the Dhoni as well, it will be the sixth or seventh word having the value 1. 7th position have the value. So comparing the Aksar and Dhoni records, nowhere at all the matching is existing. But Aksar and Dhoni are the persons that has to be captured in some way that was not possible with the one heart encoded representation. This is one major flaw. And the second one is, 
computational cost because of the sparsity problem and the presentation of zeros across all the vocabulary length of the vocabulary of the vector. So these two will not work out. Right. Now, let's see. Now, let's discuss, let's go to the solution of this problem. Okay. With another scenario, house price prediction data. Take this as an example. How the house prices will be predicted from the data set. Here are the two figures in front of you. Let's figure out these two homes are similar or not. How can you say? What do you can say? You can say these two, looking at these images, these two similar. How can you say that? With respect to some attributes like number of bedrooms, area in the square feet and number of bathrooms. In terms of the values for these attributes or properties of these two images, you can say these two houses are similar correct okay let's see i'm giving a one more image one more home with this properties bedrooms are 10 and the area 7500 square feet and number of bathrooms is 2 <coughs> now by comparing the values of these attributes of these images it is very clear that this third image are is two distinct from the first two images the first two are the small houses and this is a mansion with the varying values in terms of these attributes bedrooms area and bathrooms corresponding to these two images properties right clear now you just think about <coughs> can't you apply the same scenario even for the words how we have done it for the images apply the same scenario even for the words as well okay let's see how it will be <coughs> these are the three words doni cumins and australia these are the things we need to process text to be processed okay here are the images have been shown but please understand that these are the not actually the images these are the words that we need to process and need to convert them into the text for the task of entity recognition. Okay, right. So, in order to convert this, just by looking at the words Dhoni, Cummins and Australia, we cannot say these are the closer, we cannot say exactly what is the closeness and what is the difference between these words. Okay, if you think carefully, then applying the same strategy what we discussed just before then you can come up with these attributes Tony is a person with who is healthy and fit and residing at some location having two eyes and has a government job or something else if these properties has been extracted in order to describe these words Dhoni, Cummins and Australia coming to this with respect to these attributes. So Dhoni is a person with the value 1 and who is healthy and fit with 0.9 and located at somewhere where there is no location, physical location because it's a human being and has two eyes as a human being he might have a two eyes. So these two cumins and Dhoni is having the similar values for these attributes. Coming to the another word Australia, you can see the value given to the person attribute is zero. It is not the person representing and it's having the value one for the location. So this is called. So there is a similarity between this Dhoni cumins and Australia in terms of the first attribute or first property called person mm -hmm. and the location and coming to the value of the healthy and profit okay this is a healthy government is that somewhat closeness is there between this one and has two eyes will be zero because this is not applicable to the word of australia but it has the government this is happening so these are the unique attributes which are uh, distinguishing this word australia from the these two words doni and cumin who are close these two are the words close with respect to these three attributes and it is distinct with respect to these two attributes this way of representation is giving a clear picture of distinction between these words and meaningful relationship between these words correct okay so these assigning the ranking or the values to these attributes is giving a meaningful representation 
now from these you can get the vectors the vectors will get generated from this we can come up with this kind of vectors representation this kind now it's this is capturing this is entire matrix this is capturing a beautiful relationship between all the words in the vocabulary with respect to whatever the properties that we discussed in the just before session i mean to say just before slide so that looking at these values australia and zimbabwe these two are having these values are highly matching values for this country so it is clearly mentioning australia and zimbabwe are two countries and cumins and doni if you look at the vectors of these two for the attributes the person and healthy fit which are resembling the properties of the human being with the highest matching values and the scores now it is very clear that cumins and doni are very close each other of a kind of person the relationship between them is it's a kind of relationship is persons both are the persons here the kind of relationship is both are the countries this is how the word embedding will capture the context with the discrete values continuous vector so what it is called what we can say exactly the meaning of word embedding is word embedding is a continuous vector representation of something which is discrete in nature <coughs> clear okay let's see you are doing a food review classification whether the review of the food is positive or the re review is negative so for doing this classification task you have to train a neural network model then after that training you will get the word embedding as a side effect okay let's say you have the 100 reviews food reviews and first you need to set the vocabulary this is the work assume your vocabulary is having 5000 words in your vocabulary let's say assume that one. so these are the words in your vocabulary now your goal is to come up with this word embedding vector with the dimension 4 here what is this four dimension means is these words of the vocabulary are rated across these four features 1 2 3 4 four features some features internally it will capture the features so that does this is the four dimensions you can take n dimensions as well okay now these numbers can be calculated in such a way that similar words will have the similar types of vectors so eventually your goal is to come up with 4 by 5000 embedding matrix this is the task okay so the first thing you need to do is you need to come up with the one hard encoding this is the one so initially for all the words in the vocabulary 5000 words in the vocabulary construct the one hearted encoding once this is done so it's very clear to you uh, one hearted encoded representation is very clear to you i'm not repeating again okay now you start training here once the one hot encoding is this is the first step once it is generated then you have to start training your neural network so for this take your first training sample the first training sample is having two words in the review that is the nice foot nice and foot okay right initially you come up with this some random weights for the embedding vector for the two words nice and foot this is the random initial embedding vector then this will be multiplied with the corresponding one hearted encoded vectors of these words clear right now you will get what is this the four dimensional with the, sorry this one hot encoded is multiplied with the fourth dimension embedded vector for each word it will be happen now these two will be flattened together these are the one hot encoded when the multiplication is happened what you will get is nothing but the embedded vectors of the same words clear four dimensional embedding vectors now these two will be flattened into eight dimension vector then it will be fed to the neural network once it is fed using the sigmoid activation function you will get the output y hat 
comparing it with the truth value of y and the loss will be calculated and will be back propagated through the gradient descent to update the weights you can see how the weights are updated right every time so this will be a repetitive recursive process this is how the weights will be updated in the embedded matrix finally when you reach you will get the final embedded matrix this will go on keep changing changing change. okay this is how a review will be processed okay now we have seen the first training example with the two review two tokens in the review let's see training the model with the second training sample here in the sample, review has having three tokens. You know very clear that our network networks can work with the fixed length vectors only. So you have to fix it. So take the sentence with the maximum length from these two samples. In my example, my, in my case of data set, I have the maximum sentence length is three tokens. Okay, take the sentence with maximum length and do padding for the remaining words of the sentence. So in this case, my sentence is having the maximum length three words. So I used the padding for the first sentence, I meant to say first sample. Okay, the first sample with the two tokens nice and food were added with a padding word. So padded vector is zeros, all zeros and it multiplied with the initial random embedding matrix like how these two tokens were multiplied and will generate the the padded vectors itself or the token vectors itself now these are flattened together will generate will, will be given to the neural network model this is how the words a word embedding vector will get generated eventually it will come up with the word embedding matrix 4 by 5000 embedding matrix. This is the full old embedding matrix which has been created for all the tokens in the food review classification problem of 5000 vocabulary size. Right? Looking at these results for the embedding vectors of the words nice and good, if you look at these two values are very close to each other. It is representing clearly nice and good are the two words which are very close together okay right see the another example similarly poor and weak are the two closed words with respect to these matching values clear right this is how this embedding matrix will capture the similarity of the words in an effective way by considering the concept in terms of the uh, some features internal features called dimensions of the embedding matrix n number of dimensions you can take okay right so let's have a look on what are the different embedding techniques we have a beautiful set of embedding techniques these are the popular word to vec that we just discussed word to vec embedding representation glow and fast text all these are the three mechanisms which use the SIBO and skip gram modeling is the internal architecture. Another two more embedding techniques are popular is BERT and GPT which are based on the transformer architecture. And we have a very new recently launched one that is embedding from the language models ELMO which is a type of deep contextualized word representation which is based on LSTM architecture. This is a glance of what are the different embedding techniques, popular embedding techniques that we have. Okay, this word to vec is the most popular vector representation algorithm and the model that learns to predict the words in a context window given their neighboring words. So the main idea of this word to vec is to represent the words in a continuous vector space such that the words with the similar, similar meanings are close together in this space. Right? So, thus word to vec typically offers two main architectures for training. One is the continuous bag of word representation and another is the skip ground. Coming to the continuous bag of word representation, it predicts the current word in the given context of surrounding words. Just I am showing, with uh, visualizing with an example of the quick brown fox 
jumps over the dark so given the context of brown fox over the four words it will predict the the central world jumps this type of word to vec embedding is called continuous banner word representation skip gram is its a reverse process given the current word target word it will find out the predict the context words this is called skip gram representation of the word of the word embedding technique okay yeah this is another view of different uh, word embedding techniques in which there are mainly two categories frequency based and the production based in frequency based approach we use the number of words number of times a word occurred in the document that is called the frequency count so under this the counter vectorizer tf idf and with the co-occurrence matrix mechanism glow will be comes under the frequency based embedding approaches in prediction based approach we will predict the next word or neighboring word for a given word so under this the architectures are cbow and skip gram will come that we have seen in the word to vec representation so what to vec implementation is what to vec is implementation of word to word embedding using these two techniques by the google okay glow is another implementation of word embedding using co occurrence matrix how this glow and word to vec can be implemented there are actually two ways are there either you can use the pre trained model or you can train on your own model to use the pre trained model you just have to import the word to vec and use it training your own model involves understanding the mathematics behind but useful when you are working with very specific domain this is what all about this word embedding we'll meet in the next lecture session